Woo, hello and welcome back to Space Time with Robert. I'm Robert, it's 2021. We're looking at uh, the Orion Nebula through a small little telescope, an, a Mead ETX-80, Alice. A, I love this telescope. And it, you can kind of hear the motors going in the background. So yeah, those are the motors of the telescope. And I just wanted to show you how easy it was to take a photo of this thing. Um, right now I'm doing a four second exposure and that's what we're looking at is the screen of my laptop and here I'm gonna bump it up to five seconds <clears throat> and I'll just slowly get this brighter and brighter and we should see more and more oh check it out it looks like I can see more of the structure now let's go up to six seconds Ooh, it's chilly out here it's about 32 degrees it's uh, really foggy up north, so I'm near in the cemetery in Bellingham, the Bayview Cemetery. Let's go up to, let's let that just chill for a second, then I'll go up to seven seconds. But this is the Orion Nebula. And a cool thing about this telescope is it even will play some information for you. It's got, uh, Hey, how's it going? Good morning. It's got information stored into it, and so let's see what it says. Let's see. Wake up, telescope. Now see if I can get it to tell us some, some information. And yeah, oh, I shook it a little bit. You see that? I'm looking through the database right now in the telescope, and it's M42, right? Yeah, okay. After Saturn, there we go. seconds of exposure. seconds of exposure. It's getting pretty grainy. I'll keep going though. Let's go to 10. And I'm using a little, little baby camera. Let's just go straight up to like 15 seconds. 15 seconds of exposure on the Orion Nebula. And then I, I gotta wrap it up. Hey Michelle, we're looking at the Orion Nebula and I'm just doing a series of exposures here. Live. Which is pretty cool. There it is, 15 seconds worth of exposure on the Orion Nebula through an 80 millimeter telescope. We can start to see a lot more structure there, I can see. It's, Hmm. Kind of looks like a bat wing, right? Oh, that's so cool. And 
and uh, yeah, that's 15 seconds worth of exposure. Just to, for reference, this is what it looks like with just like four seconds of exposure. I'll lower that right now. Yeah, we can almost make out the trapezium. So if I lower it down, let's see, let's go down to like two seconds worth of exposure. Oh, almost. How about one second? I want to see if we can make out the individual little stars at the center. And yeah, oh, well, hey, that, that's one way to do it, is uh, just block the telescope I got in front of it. some light back. Oh yeah, you can kind of see these little stars here, right there, right there. Then when I when I bump it back up to, you know, let's go, let's go back up to like, what was it? What were we at? 15 seconds? Woo! Chilly. Alright, let's go back to 15 seconds and then I'll wrap it up and Get on out of here. Yeah, right? That was my UFO, yeah, the little cursor that I put on the screen just to show you what's going on. Whoa, that's bright. But yeah, I got a new camera on the way, and so hopefully I'll be showing you this just way higher quality. That's the goal. Oh, cool, you can see kind of like a little nebula over here in this area. Yesterday was so bright over here in the Netherlands. Happy no clouds for a long time. Awesome. I'm so glad you got no clouds for a while. That's really good. I'm going to lower the exposure back down to like nine seconds. And yeah, for those joining in, this is the Orion Nebula. And this is through a, um, a little $140 camera. It's a ZWO ASI 120MC. It's a planetary imaging camera. And the laptop we're looking at is like a Surface Pro 4. And the, te the telescope is a Mead ETX 80. The Surface Pro 4 costs more than all of the telescope equipment combined. So, it's pretty cool you can do this, you know. It's so cheap. But I love those little stars, all the little purple halos going around them and stuff. Some people don't like that. I love them. I think it's so cool. And with the exposure settings like that, it really looks like it's just exploding, right? That's awesome. Hello. Alrighty. Thanks for joining in. I just wanted to show you all this cool camera technology. I hope you stay warm, stay safe, and I will hopefully have something cooler to show you soon once the package arrives and not, you know, saying anything about the delivery system that I'm... Oh, whoa, you can see shadow. I just noticed that. Look at that. Oh, no. Backing out. Yeah, you can see like it's darker to the left there than it is to the right. And you can ni you can see a nice fine ridge where it goes from like a, a purple to a, a faint blue. That is so awesome. I love that. Did you know why the stars peak at the top? Uh... I think it's actually because the telescope is drifting a little bit and so here I can show you real quick. I'll lower the exposure back down to about four otherwise it's gonna be real dramatic and I'm gonna move the telescope so you can see the the actual drift a little bit. Oh we got some drift right there. And I think I want to know if that's what you mean by uh, why the star's lights are peaking at the top. So Move, darn you. Okay, there we go. I'll move it a little bit more. Oh, that's the wrong direction. Let's go down. Let's 
I'm starting to lose it, but yeah. Oh, cool. All right, that's it. That's so cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, awesome. I'm glad we got to the bottom of that. So I'm just <laughs> doing my best to get it back into center now. Okay, that's that's pretty good. And as you can see, it's a very shaky system. Uh, all I have to do is like breathe on it and it'll start shaking around. But yeah, I can go ahead and increase that exposure again. Let's go back up to 10 seconds worth of exposure. And every time I move the telescope like that, uh, it does kind of wobble here and there until it finally finds its bearings and then it starts chilling out and everything gets nice and smooth. Oh, that is awesome. Uh, Kangaroo 911, I'm using, uh, sorry, 911, I'm using um, a ZWO ASI 120MC planetary imaging camera for my eyepiece. It's just like a a camera for imaging planets, taking videos of them actually. And what I'm using it here for is not, it's conventional, it's not what it's designed for, deep sky, but obviously it's cool that you can, right? This is awesome. But that graininess that you see, that's um, something that can be resolved by getting a, a much more expensive tels uh, camera. One that has coolers built into it. But I hope that answers your question. It's, it's a camera instead of an eyepiece. <clears throat> yeah, that's the Orion Nebula. That's so cool, right? All right, let's just go up to, let's just blow our eyes out with 20 seconds worth of exposure. It's gonna take 20 seconds, but hopefully it works. If I don't get in front of the top, <laughs> it might be a little blurry. Oh wait, that's right, I gotta go. Totally forgot about that, I was wrapping up. Oh, that's awesome, cool. We could see a lot more structure there. There's a lot, you could see some tracking error there, but look at that. That is the Orion Nebula. So purple, so pretty. Oh, thank you so much, Helix. I appreciate you. Yeah, that's, that's just awesome. All right, gotta go, y'all. Thank you very much for joining in. And uh, that's the Orion Nebula. Hopefully I'll, we'll have a, another view through a new camera soon. Stay warm. Bye. Love you. Ah, space. It never ends. Oh, my goodness.